In this video, you're going to learn how you can make a to-do list app with React. So we can see that I can write a note. So let's just say um, upload video. So there is our to-do. If I press on it, we're going to have a line through it. And if you reload, then that one's going to disappear. And then let's just say that you open this later on. So let's reload. We can see that it stays because we're going to also use local storage to store this data. So make sure you watch this whole video to not miss anything out. But before we get started, make sure they like this video, subscribe, comment down below, and I actually do have a GitHub repository of this, so if you don't want to write any CSS code, then you can go ahead and copy all of that. But now, let's get started. Let's go ahead and first create our project, so I'm going to open Terminal, and I'm going to run Create React App, so npx create React App at latest, and we're going to name it To-Do List. And now let's press on enter and wait for everything to install. Now let's go ahead and cd to that project. So let's write cd to-do list. And then we can press on tab to autocomplete. Press enter. And now if we write code dot. And then it should launch VS Code. And let's delete all the files that we're not going to need. So let's delete these three files from our source. Let's remove the app.css, app.test.js. And that should be good for now. So in the app.js, we're going to remove all of the imports. And let's only have the diff for now. So just like that. And then in the index.js, we're going to remove all of this part right here. And we can also remove strict mode. And so the only import that's left to remove is going to be the last one. So let's go ahead and remove it just like that. And so for this project, I'm going to be using Bootstrap. But you obviously don't have to. So... Um, you can go to getbootstrap.com and it pretty much just copy all of the CSS that I'm going to write through Bootstrap. But if not, then you can obviously write your own code. But what I'm going to do right now is copy all the links. So I'm going to start with the CSS link and then I'm going to go to public index.html and then paste it under the title. But first I'm going to remove all of the comments. So put that in here and let's also change the title to to-do list. Now we're going to need the JavaScript, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that too. And then I'm going to paste it under the root over here, and let's delete the non-script. And now we can close our index.html and go to our app.js. And in here we're going to start by calling a to-do list function, which is going to be our element. So let's go ahead and write const to-do list, and that's going to be a function. So in here... Let's return a div, and in here we're going to pass in our to-do list. So there we go. Now let's open our divs in here, and let's add a few classes. So the first class that we're going to add is going to be our to-do list, so that we can style it with our own CSS. And so after our to-do list, we're going to be adding bootstrap classes. So let's start with a container. We're going to set the position to absolute. We're going to set the top to be 50, and then start to be 50. Let's translate middle we're going to set the text to be center and then we're also going to set it to be rounded now what this should do is center out our object so i'm going to create an h1 for now and let's just write to-do list to see if that works and now if we go to our view terminal and write npm start it's going to start our react project and we can see that it's centered but i think i misspelled the text center so there it is so text center and now if we go back, we can see that it's going to be centered. So we're going to actually keep the H1. So I'm going to go ahead and add some styles to it. So let's write display 4. And then also let's do font weight normal. Because I don't want it to be too bold. So there it is. And so this is going to be inside of our to-do list. So let's go ahead and add some CSS to that. And let's paste it in here. And we're going to start by setting the background color to something a bit darker than white. So... I'm going to set it to white, and we're going to change it to something darker, somewhere around here. And now if we actually open it, we're going to see the background color here. So we have to start by changing the width. And here I'm going to set the width 50 view width. So there we go, so that it wouldn't be too big. Let's set it to something a bit darker, because I think it's a bit too white. So that should be good enough for now. We're going to be setting all of the colors later on. And let's set the height now. So view height. And now there it is. So I'm actually going to set the width to 40 because I think 50 is a bit too much. So 
that looks a lot nicer and now when we actually go on a mobile phone we can see that it's not going to look the best so we're going to have to add a media here so media screen and then we're going to write and max width 767 pixels or 68 but i'm just going to do 767 and in here let's copy this and paste it and we're going to change width to be let's try 85 and then the height should probably stay the same so there we go so that looks a lot nicer and that's that's probably what it should look like on a mobile phone um, but we can see how that's going to work we can also change the font size of the text but we can do that later on so this would pretty much be the main part for the to-do list. But now let's go back to our app.js and add a div under our each one. And this div is going to be the container for our to-dos. So I'm just going to add a class of to-dos. In here, we're actually going to call a separate function. So let's go ahead and create it. I'm going to call it to-do. So that would be a separate to-do. And then we're going to map it after. So let's go ahead and return a div for now with a class name of to-do. And here we're going to have an h2 and since we don't really have anything i'm just going to set this to a dummy text so let's just say do my homework and then the class is going to be set to text start so that it wouldn't be centered we're going to add some padding of two font size is going to be one and then we're going to be adding a separate class after we click it later on so that it would have a line through it but for now we could just keep it like this let's call our function in here and we're going to be mapping it later on but that's good for now and so now we can see our to do over here let's go ahead and add some styles so we're going to go to our index.css let's go under our to-do list and then in here we're just going to write to do let's start by setting the background color to whatever you want i'm going to set it to a light blue so I'm going to set it to aqua and then set it to be a bit darker so somewhere around here let's set the text color to white add a border radius of 0.4 rems and then let's also add a padding of 0.5 rems and now when we go back we can see our to do and let's actually go ahead and select our h2 so i'm going to copy this paste it under select the h2 in our to do Let's start by setting the font weight to 300, line height, we're going to set that to 1.2, and then the min height is going to be 3 REMs, and then let's also set the font size, so font size, and I'm just going to do 1.5 REMs, and that should work, so if we go back here, there it is, and for the colors, I've already picked a set of colors, but if you want to, then you can always set it to your own colors, but I'm going to go ahead and copy them, and if you want to, then you can do that too, so... Let's go to our to-do list and the background color for that would pretty much just be F1, F1, F1 and so on. Now for the to-do, so down here, this would be the color that I chose. So I'm going to actually go back real quick and this is what it's going to look like. And we can see that it's going to be just a bit different. And then the text color for that is just white. But now we actually need a way to create our to-dos over here so what we're gonna do is go back to our app.js and under our to-dos we're gonna make another div and this div is gonna have a class name of add note and in here we're gonna have an input and a button so when we're on a large screen it means that we're gonna be able to press on enter so we're only gonna have an input so we're gonna write something and then when we press on enter it's gonna create our to-do but when we're on a smaller device, we're not going to be able to press on enter. So we're going to have to add a button that would do the exact same thing. So for the input, it's just going to be a normal text input. And we're going to add a class name of form control, which comes from bootstrap. And then pretty much all the other attributes are going to be to create it. So we actually need to create a use state. So I'm just going to write use state to import it. And the name would just be to do input since it's going to be our input so set to do input that's going to be equal to use state and i'm going to set this to blank for now now in our input we're going to set the value to be to do input and then on change what we want is to get the event and we're going to set to do input 
to be equal to event.target.value. And now our to do input use state should be equal to our input. And now what we want is when we press enter, we want to run a function which is going to create our note. And to do that, we're going to have to write on key down. Here we're also going to get our event. So make sure that the user presses on enter. So to do that, we're going to write e.key equals to enter and make sure that the e is capitalized. And so if that's true, we're going to run our function called add to do, which we haven't created yet. So let's go ahead and create that. So const add to do. And for now, we can just console log to do input. And then let's also set to do input to be equal to blank again. And let's fix this a real quick. So there we go. Now, if we go back and go to our console, if we write something, we get nothing. But if we press on enter, we can see that we're going to get our console log and then our input clears out. And so that's pretty much the very basics of how that's going to work. And we need to make another use state, which is going to be all of our to do. So I'm going to name it to do list. And then let's also write set to do list. And then that's going to be an array. And later on, we're going to be using local storage and we're going to be setting it to equal to that. But um, for now, what we're going to do is before we actually set our to do input to be blank, we're going to we're going to write set to do list. And we're pretty much just going to set it to what it was. So to do list. And we're also going to add our new list. So we actually have to get the event again. And then here we're going to write e dot target dot value just like that. And we have to put that in an array, of course. And now let's actually also console log our to do list. So to do list, I forgot to add the E in here. So let's go back here. And so every time we write something and press on enter, it's going to be adding that value into our use state. And now let's actually change our to do list to be an object and you'll see why in a second. So we're going to have two properties. The first one is going to be our incomplete to do's which is going to be an array and then our complete ones. And the way that this is going to work is when we add it to do, we're going to push it to our incomplete ones. And then when we complete it, it's going to move to our complete ones. And the cool thing about this is that we're going to be saving this into our local storage and we're only going to be saving our incomplete to do's to our local storage, having an effect of when you complete your to do, it's still going to stay on your page with a line through it, but then when you reload, it's going to disappear, which is a pretty small but nice touch that I've added here. So now what we have to do is we have to change this. And to make this simpler, what we could do is just write to do list dot incomplete dot push. And then we're going to push the value in our input or what we could also do. I'm not really sure why I didn't do that is we could literally just push our to do input. And then we can remove all of this from here. So remove this and it's going to work the exact same way. So now if we reload, actually nothing is really going to happen because I forgot to add a map method here. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do list and make sure that you write incomplete because we're not pushing anything into our complete yet dot map and then to do and then we're going to put our to do inside of here, just like that. So if I write something and press on enter, we can see that it's going to show up and we actually have to pass in some props. So I'm just going to pass in to do and that's going to be equal to to do. And here I'm going to write props. And then for now, we only have our to do later on. We're going to have more stuff. So I'm just going to write it like this and the text is going to be equal to to do. So there we go. Now, if we write hello, press on enter, we can see that it's also going to write hello. Let's write do my homework, press on enter, and there it is. Now we actually need to style our input and make this look a lot nicer. So let's go ahead and work on the CSS. So let's actually go ahead and add a placeholder before we add some styles. And I'm going to write add note dot 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 and our index.css. Let's remove all of this stuff because we don't need it. And we're going to set the default padding and margin to be zero. And now in our to do list, we're going to set the padding to be 0.5 REMs. 
display property is going to be grid and let's try doing grid template rows and i'm going to say 10 percent 80 and then 10 again and at the very bottom here let's select our input so add no input and we're just going to set the height to be 100 and we're going to style it later on but um, this is what it's going to look like but I think, yeah, if we're going to go on a smaller screen, then we can see that it's not going to look the best. So what we can do is put all of this inside of the div. So I'm just going to write div in here. Do that. Go back to our CSS. And we're going to change this to 90% and then 10. And hopefully that's going to look much better. So there we go. And then when we go on a smaller screen we can see that it's not going to look as bad as it did before. So now let's go to our input and fix that part. So we have to start by set, setting the font size. So font size, I'm going to do 1.6 rem. Let's set the outline and then border to be none. Border radius 0.4 rems should look good enough. The color is going to be white. And then the background color is going to be a new one. So I'm just going to find it. There it is. It's going to be a dark blue. You can change that if you want to, but there it is. And this is what our input is going to look like. So we actually also have to add an own focus because we're using bootstrap. So now it should look much better. So there it is. And maybe we could set this to two rems. So there we go let's go ahead and lace holder and we're going to set the color to be white but we're going to change the opacity somewhere somewhere here and so now we should see it placeholder is going to be lighter but then when we start typing we can see it's going to get um, lighter now i think what i'm going to do here so in our title i'm going to add a margin bottom Let's fix that so margin bottom of four so there we go and let's add a margin top of two just so that it looks nicer so there we go and before i actually change anything i'm going to go ahead and add a background so i'm going to go to the public and paste it and if you want the same background image then you can open the github repository down below and just copy and paste it now we're going to go and select the body set the background image to be url and let's find it now so public there it is we're going to set the background repeat to no repeat and then also the background size to be cover and we're going to set the min and max height to be 100 view height so that our image is always going to look nice so just like that and i'm also going to change the width to 35 since i think it's a bit too large right now and so this is what our to-do list is going to look like now. The background is pretty nice. But we have one problem, which is if we have too many, we can see that it's not going to look too good. So let's go ahead and fix that. And in our to-do list, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the left and right padding to be zero. And you'll see why in a second. And let's go ahead and select our to-dos. So to-dos, we're going to set the max height to be 100% and the overflow y to be auto so that it's going to show it and in our body let's also set the um, overflow to be hidden so that we wouldn't see it over here but now we can see that it's fixed but not fully because we still have it at the very bottom here so let's actually go to our to do here and add a margin bottom 0.4 that should be good enough so there we go and now let's go back to our app.js and i'm going to add a class name of the do content to this div and we're going to select it here so to do content and in here we're going to set the margin bottom to let's try 6 rem and see what that looks like so i think that was pretty close um yeah so that's actually, I think, all that we're going to need for now. And now we're going to add padding here. So padding, 1rem. And that's a bit too much. So let's do 0.5 again. And so there it is. But now let's add a padding to our input. So 
let's find the add note. I'm not really sure if we have that. So let's go ahead and do that. So add note, padding 0.5 REM. And top and bottom, we already have that. So we can just set that to zero. And there it is. So now if we have a lot of to-dos, we can see that it's going to look much nicer now. And we actually have a scroll bar. And let's actually make this a bit higher. Let's go to our title now and remove the margin bottom. And we're also going to need to remove some margin because if we add a lot of notes, we can see that the margin bottom is going to be too much. So let's go down here and we're going to set this to 5 REMs. And now it's going to look a lot nicer. And now we're going to need to solve a quick problem. So if you press enter a few times and then you write something, we can see that we're going to have a bunch of blanks. And to fix that, we're going to go to our app here, to our to-do function. And we're going to write a quick if statement. So if to do input dot length is going to be equal to zero, then we're going to return. And that should fix it. So now if I press on enter a lot of times and then I write something, we can see that nothing happens. But then if you actually write something like, let's say, finish project or something like that and press on enter, we can see that it's going to work. Now let's add an on click functionality to our to do. So on click, I'm going to run a function called done to do. And let's, let's create it now. So const done to do. And in here, or in our props now, we're going to need to pass in two more things, which is going to be our to do list. I'm going to actually copy that. And also our set to do list. And that means we're going to ha have to pass it in here. So to do list to-do list, and then set to-do list, let's copy that too, and then set to-do list, so there we go. Now in here, we're going to make a new list, our incomplete is going to be equal to to-do list dot incomplete, and then complete is going to be the same thing, but complete. Now in our incomplete here, what we can do is we can use the filter method, to filter out our current to-do, which is going to remove it from our incomplete here. So this is what it's going to look like. Here we're going to get our current to-do. And so if our current to-do doesn't equal to to-do, then we're going to keep it. But then if it does, then we're going to remove it from there. And just to show that it works, I'm going to console log our new list. So we're getting a big error here. I forgot to record here, but if you take a look at the very top, you can see that comma, so you can go ahead and remove that and then copy all this code. I also mapped our complete here and I added an is done, which we can see we have a false here and true depending on if it's incomplete or complete. Now that we have our is done, we can go to our classes here and add curly brackets. And so here we can write if is done is true then we're going to add a special class so let's do that is done equal to true then we're going to add a class of done else we're just not going to do anything and we actually need to add space in here or else it would be like this if our done is true so i'm going to go ahead and do that here and now we have to go to our index.css and actually add the line through so let's write to do h2.done and here I'm going to write text decoration and line through. So now hopefully that should work. So let's try one and two. And now if I press on two, we're going to have line through that. And now there's a small problem here, or it's not a problem, but I prefer it to be a bit different. So here we can see that we're running our to-do list.incomplete first, which means that all of our incomplete are going to be at the very top. So if I keep adding, we can see that they're going to be above our to do's that are done. And let's say if I press on this one, it's going to go to the very bottom. So to fix that, you can just change the order so that the complete ones are going to be at the very top. So now we can see that it's flipped. And that's just how I prefer it more. So you can obviously do whatever you want. But now we're pretty much done other than local storage. So everything else is done. We just need to add local storage because now if we reload, we can see that everything is gone. We're going to start by fetching our local storage. So we're going to write use effect so that once we open our project, first thing that we're going to do is see if we have anything saved or stored. So let's write if local storage dot get item 
and I'm gonna call it to do's and let's actually do if this doesn't exist then we're just gonna return so return else we're gonna write set to do list and that's gonna be equal to local storage dot get item and then that's gonna be um, to do's um, and set to do list what we're actually gonna do is we're only gonna set our incomplete because we're not gonna have any complete so here we're gonna do incomplete it's gonna be equal to that and we have to set this as an object so just like this and then complete it's just gonna be an array so just like that and now let's go to here so add to do and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do local storage dot set item to do's and that's gonna be equal to our to-do list so to-do list to-do list dot incomplete because we're only gonna be saving our incomplete so that should be it for that and I think we have to copy this one more time go down here so done to do and here we're gonna do this again so we're gonna move this down here and now it should work so I'm gonna reload and let's start by writing homework and if we reload we're gonna get an error so we're getting an error here um, I actually forgot to do something here so this should be json.parse so json.parse and then now we can do that and so when we actually save it so local storage.set item we have to stringify that so json.stringify um, and then at the very bottom here we have to do the same thing so json.stringify and then new list and this is not going to work so let's go to application and then let's delete our local storage so let's do this again right homework save and there we go so now we have an array and if we reload we can see that it's going to stay here if i press on it now it's going to save it like this which means that we're going to have to fix it. So in here, new list dot incomplete. So now let's delete this again one more time. And this should be the last thing. So homework, let's um, write, go for a run, upload video. And now we should have multiple to do. So homework, go for run, upload video. And now if I press on upload video, that means I'm done. We can see that it disappears from here. And if we reload, we can see that it's gone. So if I press on all of them now, our value is going to be empty and it's still going to work. So there we go. And if you want to make this cleaner, you can always make a folder in source. So components here, we're going to have to do list dot JSX. And then we're also going to have to do dot JSX. Now we just have to copy and paste. So copy this paste this in here and then here we have to import use effect and then use state and we also have to export this so export to do list and don't forget about the default now let's do the exact same for our to do so copy go here paste it and now we can export default to do and we also have to import use state so import use state now if we go to app, we can delete all of this to make it a lot cleaner. Go here, and then we have to import our to-do, because we're using it over here. And in our app, we can remove this import, and then import the to-do list. So to-do list, not to-do, to-do list. There we go. And now this should work the exact same way. So console, there should be no errors. There we go. So note and we do have actually a small error so let's go ahead and fix that so what we can do is actually write index here and then set the key to equal to index and it's still and it's gonna work so index and then key is gonna be set to index and now we're not gonna have any errors homework video and so on but hopefully you get the point so if I press on video now it's gonna be complete and if I reload it's still gonna be here so that just means that we have to fix something small and that's going to be in our application here so i'm not really sure what happened but let's go back here 
and see where it is. So it's not in our to-do. It might be here. No, it's not. So we don't need to use state. We need use actually we don't need anything in here. So let's see. So to do's. There we go. This was the only tiny mistake or error that created all this. And now you just want to delete everything. Let's see if this works now. So note to do whatever. And now if I press on to do, we can see that disappears from here. And we can see that everything's going to work just fine. But now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to change the responsiveness here to 1400 pixels. And let's change this to 39. Now, so let's make this smaller. And first of all, I think we need to change the min height here. So min height, let's do two REMs. So that looks good enough. So let's go down here, dot to do, h2, and min height, not width, min height. It's going to be two REMs. The font size here should be much smaller. So let's just copy this, paste it down here. And then font size, I'm going to do one RAM and see what that looks like. So, yeah, so let's change that to 1.4. And I think that's pretty much it for that part. But now we actually just need to add a button here. So for phones, because we're not going to be able to press on enter. So let's remove this. And in our to-do list here, I'm going to actually space this out. We're going to add a button. We can write add and now here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the value of the button to be input value, which is going to be our to do input. And then on click, what we're going to do is we're going to run our to do function just like that. And hopefully it's going to work the exact same way, but it's just going to look weird. So there's our button. I'm going to go back here. So button, I'm going to add a class of button, button primary. And you can always style that. So if we can't press on enter, we press on the button and we can see that it's going to add our note. But we still have to put it beside our input here. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to write dot add note. We're going to set the display property to grid. And then the grid template columns, we're going to set that to 80 and 20. And that should work out pretty well. So there is our button. It might be too big or too small. But let's actually just set this to 15. Hopefully that's going to look better. So there it is. And now for the button, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and write add note button. We're going to set the display property to none. And then for the add note, we're going to set the display property to block. And hopefully that's going to work now. So it almost works. Let me just make sure that it goes back to full width. So that part works. We just have to remove this display from our button here. So add note button and then display block. So now it should show up. So there it is. So large screens, we can see that everything works. Now, smaller screens, we do need to change the margins a bit here. So let's go back in here. This is pretty much just repetitive stuff. You do the same thing to make this responsive. So let's do to do content and then margin bottom four. Was it four or three? Yeah, so three RAM. And now it should work pretty much the exact same way. So mobile. And now when we stretch it. It also looks nice. So maybe we can just set this to a plus sign. So our button do that. It's going to be much easier. So there we go. So let's just increase the font size here. So 1.2. And for scroll bars, I'm just going to go to Chrome and search modern scroll bar CSS and then find the one that you really like. So I like this one CSS and I'm going to copy it. So it's going to be all of this stuff where it says custom scroll bar. Paste it in here. And it's definitely going to be too thick, so or actually it might not be. Yeah, so let's change the colors a bit. So make this a bit darker and then going to make this even darker over here. 
So there it is. So now we have a nice scroll bar and everything works well. And so this is going to be for this video. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then make sure to leave a like. Subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss upcoming videos. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to see any specific videos. And hopefully, see you in the next video.